But let's let's move on to humanitarian issues. Let's move on to somebody yes. that's very passionate about people. Hilda Dokubo, Nigerian film actress and youth advocate who once served as special advisor on youth affairs to Governor Peter Odile of River State is one of uh, the 2019 Nigerian University Theatre Art Festival currently uh, Theatre Art Festival currently holding in Lagos. And uh, Hilda, being a graduate of theatre arts uh, from uh, uh, University of Port Harcourt in 2015, has won several awards and she's done a lot of very good things in this industry. I mean, I mean at, at this, uh, I'm sure you just want to extol her virtues even more. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, well, she's uh, won several awards indeed. Uh, she's multi talented. She's gorgeous, she's been into politics, she's had a thing. Well, she's since joined us in the studio. Yes. And let's cut the chase. She did Thank you see. so much for joining us. And happy birthday. Happy she's birthday. Happy birthday. Right? Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> golden years. Wow. Great to have you join us on the show. I Thank think you look 25. Ah, uh, really? <laughs> and let's get straight into it. From your okay. first movie, which was Jezebel. Yes. To what we have now in Nollywood. I mean, we have global streaming services acquiring rights to Nollywood movies. How would you describe the pace of growth of the industry? Um, better than Nigerians' pace of growth in terms of human development. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that is, start. yes, this is, um, well, it's Nigerians only indigenous product. Mm grown by Nigerians, consumed majorly by Nigerians, and right now by the entire world. Um, in terms of technicals, and, and in technicals now I mean equipments, we have grown. Um, we have moved from using regular VHS cameras, oh my goodness, <laughs> to now using cine cameras, mm. and we're daring to shoot whatever K is used in, in Hollywood. So we're shooting 4K, we're shooting 6K. We're just daring and very bold. Um, in terms of personnel, we have also grown. Um, once upon a time, it's one person being everybody and, you know, group of friends going on location. But these friends were driven by passion and by training. Um, so we have also grown in those regards. We have grown... Um, on how we tell our stories. Um, when we first started, there was, you know, we sit around and then we improvise a story and everyone does, you know, spontaneous improvisation of lines and all of that. Mm. And we would shoot and... They were homegrown stories. They were stories about us. Um, but now we're almost becoming whiter than milk mm -hmm. and we want to do more than we we should do in terms of how we want to tell our stories. And albeit, sometimes they're not exactly good representations do, do, do of us. Do you think that's the crux of the problem? Because, I mean, and I'm going to say this, it's going to sound very controversial. Mm -hmm. I still go back and watch the old Nollywood movies. Because for me, they resonate more with me. That is the Nollywood for me. You know, the, the stories of you know, suffering, hunger, somebody coming out of poverty, doing quite well, the Andy story, rather than... I mean, I'm not saying we can't scale into sci-fi and the likes, <laughs> but rather than this... Uh, well, I think... Fast forward into the future, I want to do? <laughs> yes, we, we should go into the future, but... Um, OK, as Hilda, mm -hmm. I think we have enough of us that we can actually show to the public. We're just a mirror, you know, so we reflect the society to the society to say this is who you are. So if you can't make changes quickly, make changes, right? Or if you're good at something, okay, so you're good. Please enhance this. For Hilda, that's what Hilda would rather have. Hilda would rather have us tell the Nigerian rich story that we have of the people of our cultures, you know, that's who Hilda is. But Hilda is not the entire industry. So there's still people who want to be different, who want to be bold, who want to show things that I may not agree with, but mm. that is Hilda, not agreeing. Mm. And when stuff like that happen, I won't be part of the production. I just step aside because I want to be able to teach people something. And if I can't teach you anything by what I do, then I don't want to be part of it. 
Yes, so you turned 50 yesterday, again, happy birthday, and you are the ambassador for New, uh, New TAF. You spent, the, you spent some time with them. Why was it important for you to spend? I mean, a lot of people who turn 50 would rather, you know, throw, go out or go for a party, but it was important to you to spend time at this festival. Why was that important for you? First, I never count age because I've been an adult since I was nine. Um, <laughs> but, you know, um, at New Taf, I had more people who have known me in my entire life. Some people who had my birth certificate with them because <laughs> we went to school together. So I couldn't say anything. They already knew. So <laughs> what the hell? Um, but it was important. It wasn't actually yesterday. It was on the 22nd. Oh, okay. Yeah. And on the 22nd, I was with young people in Port Harcourt, 150 young people. And we were looking at how tech affects um, Nollywood and an alternative economy outside of oil. And, you know, when I came back, I was still in that mood, and it was important for me to be with young people. Why? Because my entire life, that's all I've ever done on my birthdays. I'm always with someone underprivileged or something. So when I'm not spending it with um, fatherless children, I'm spending it with orphans or I'm spending it with the physically challenged. I don't know any other way, never done any other thing. So um, it was important. You know, for me, age is about giving back. God gives you 365. You haven't paid anything for it. So on this special day, use it to bless someone else. I'm talking about giving back. Uh, I watched an interview you granted recently, and you said your sojourn into politics was not planned. At all. It was just about you giving back, and someone noticed, and then you were part of government. And I wonder if you have plans to go back to government this time around planned, mm -hmm. or are you just going to take the Kate Henshaw route <laughs> of quitting because it's so expensive to even do the campaigns? <laughs> I tell you what, if politics continues the way it is, hell no! <laughs> I take the Kate Henshaw route. Um, but if politics becomes um, an opportunity to work with people to build your community, yes, I want to be in and this time planned. Mm. But looking at what we have and looking back at where we're coming from, I don't think... Whoever is there now, I don't want to call names or on mm. television, um, like they have any intentions of moving. Mm. They, they're just going to keep making it more clear mm. by the day. Let's talk about something you're very passionate about. I mean, a lot of people know you from the movies, from appearing in musical videos too, mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't know you appeared in Austin Melado's video for <laughs> Nigeria football team in 1998. <laughs> but something you're passionate about is hunger. I mean, I saw you cry. We all know you to be the cry heel on oh, screen. Yes. <laughs> but I saw you cry when you spoke about hunger. Hunger is something that is eating into the society. Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world, and this is very painful. I mean, we'll come back after this quick commercial break. We'll talk more about this and why Hilda cried, truly, because of uh, hunger. back. We're talking to the very wonderful uh, Hilda Dokubo here. Hilda Dokubo is here uh, because the National Association of Theatre Arts Students uh, NUTAF is going on currently. We're having, you know, this proceedings. The festival. The yes. festival going on, giving back to the society. And she's 50. In fact, uh, she's a big ambassador uh, for NUTAF, and she's coming to educate the people and set the next generation straight. And I asked you a question. I said, I said, you really cried in 2007 when you were talking about uh, hunger and poverty. I mean, what was that campaign about? And why, why is it that you cried? <laughs> I've been ambassador for Hunger Free, MDG 1, um, then MDG, now um, SDG. SDG, and I think it's something else now. Yeah. They just keep rebaptizing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I'd written a book, which is supposed to be part of 50. And we're keeping it for later because I want for people to take their time to read it. But I'm just going to give a peep. Hunger is everywhere. And for me, hunger is the main insecurity that we have. Mm. Unfortunately, we don't need the military to kick hunger out. Now, hunger is something that steals your rights from you. It steals the right to think 
rightly from you. And if you can't think well, there's no way on earth that you're going to make any decision that makes sense. You're going to be taking wrong decisions and you're going to be making the wrong steps every step the way. So I've seen hunger. I know hunger and hunger knows me. Mm -hmm. In fact, when hunger sees me, he knows he's in trouble mm -hmm. because I've been a hunger killer from age nine. And, you know, it hurts to see that people don't see that hunger is something that you really can fight because it makes you so powerless and so vulnerable. And if you don't put up a fight, it's going to kill you. So I'm um, speaking on the UN platform at that time, and, you know, we don't use social media. Um, it got to a point where I had to talk about the young people I knew who had died because of hunger. Not because there was no food, but because they couldn't think right. They took on all the habits that killed them eventually. They took on drugs, they took on sex, they took on killing, they took on arms. You know, they just went into the streets because they couldn't take any decision that was right. Right now, it's happening. We have a lot of people who have plenty of money, but they're so poor. You know, they're so poor mentally that all they keep doing is grab and grab and grab. And even now, as I speak about it, I get really emotional because that's the only reason why Nigeria is the way Nigeria is. If people were not really, truly hungry people in their minds and in everything that they do, we would be a better nation and the world would be looking at us right now because we're blessed with modern oil. But our poverty level has reduced us to a people who think mono. So mono economy, mono life, mono politics, mono, mm. mono. You know, we're so mono in our minds that we're trying to make all political parties bow to one. You raise an opposition, you're an enemy. You know, like, why are we so hungry? Why? So I hate hunger. I hate how it makes people feel. I hate how it makes people respond. I, I, I hate, you know, what it takes away. Hunger is mean. So whenever I talk about hunger, and which is why every time I get approached to say, speak to young people, all I want to do is enrich their minds so much that they feel stronger than a multi-zillionaire. Mm. So they can make the right decisions and speak right and be so hopeful that they never think that anyone is better. They just want to be better than them. They become uh, competitors of themselves. You know, they yeah. set their own standards, they break them, and they set fresh standards for themselves. So, so, so are you happy with okay. what you're saying so far with the young Nigerians? I mean, to make the change, they would say, I mean, for a democratic system that we operate, it begins with the elections. When you see the numbers of the young people who go out to vote, it's depressing. Are you satisfied? You know, I can't be. If I was, I wouldn't attend all the trainings. I get invited to speak to, um, on an average, in a very good week, I speak to more than a 1,000 young people. And I don't stop. I want to keep speaking. I'm not, um, I'm not even impressed with what the adults give to the young ones, right? So why would I now be impressed with the young ones if they don't react right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of young people are already disillusioned. And the ones who are not, who are aspiring, are aspiring, um, looking at the wrong pictures. You know, what pictures are we giving to them, really? You know, so if you call a young person, once upon a time, if you asked a young person, what would you want to be? You say a doctor. Mm -hmm. Now you ask a young person, what do you want to be? And if it's a girl, she says, oh, I want to contest. I want to be in a beauty pageant. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much intelligence do you need to do that? Anyone can do that, right? So why aren't we aspiring to be anything better than superficial? Because everything we see around us makes us feel that way. The last election, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. You know, the way that we went out campaigning and begging people to step out, and a lot of people did step out with the disenfranchising of all of us, I doubt if three people will come out next election. Mm -hmm. You know, you do make an interesting point, one about hunger, not only being a physical problem, but also being a mental problem. And the fact that you, on a weekly basis, speak to about a thousand people. To bring you back to the Newtown Festival happening, the theme is theatre, governance and globalisation. So looking at the synergy between these three, how do you, in your opinion, uh, see how 
theater can affect our governance and, and put it on a global scale so that it's reflective of, of, of what we are actually trying to achieve in society. Okay, so let's put it this way. I speak to you, you hear me. Sometimes you walk out of the door and that's it, it's gone. But when you see it, you go through all my emotions with me, you don't forget. That's why we say be careful what you let people see, mm. right? Now, for us in theater, what we do is we're mirrors. We just hold up the mirror, not to look at us, mm. but to look at the society and so the society can see itself. Mm. Now, when you see yourself, you make a decision whether you want to remain the way you mm. are or change. Now, in terms of governance, there are scripts there, out there, that are either satires or comedies or mm. uh, farce or whatever, that we can show, hold up, and if they would attend, then they'll see how the people truly feel. And it's truly powerful. But my que what, what hurts me is, is it free today? And I'll give you an instance. I think it was 67. Herbert Ogunde yes. put up a show, Western Nigeria. There were two politicians fighting, mm -hmm. Awolowo and um, Ladoki Akitola. Mm -hmm. And the show... ...that's government and governance. And Laduke, the thing got so much Laduke that he banned Abba Tugunde's theatre group all over the Western Nigeria in the 60s for about five, ten years. That did happen. Do we still have people that can mirror this and put it out to society and let society see? We had a very good friend of ours come in here recently, mm -hmm. a producer that you know, made a film on Badamasi Babangida. He's getting threats not to release that movie. That's the society we live in today. So is this, is the theater... Fear and fable. Yeah. Is the theater free? Is it free now? <laughs> it's not completely free and can't be because they know how powerful it is. Even the young uh, people who practice are not even very free. Um, it's unfortunate that people can't stand the truth. I would have thought that if you were told the truth, it was for you to make changes and you should... Be happy and proud that there's someone to tell you that this isn't working. Um, unfortunately, we are at that point where people are scared. So they're taking the easy way route, um, out. And I keep saying, we can't keep doing this. Now everyone says to you, oh, the production has to be a comedy, which is why I love Alibaba. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's comedy, but bro, you got to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Right? So I, I, you know, I love Alibaba, I love Bovi. They will always tell you something. Subtly, you will laugh, but if you have something up there, yeah. you would know exactly. It's not exactly free, but it's also not exactly gagging if you know how to tell the story and tell it right. Mm. One more thing before we round up. Let's bring it back to Hollywood. At the no, beginning of us, too. Nollywood. Um, you know, well, at, in doing our introduction, you were saying a lot of good things you had seen in your journey as, you know, Nollywood actress. But there are still things that we are missing out on, even in 2019. Can you just tell us some of those things that, if you could, you would just nip in the bud to make sure that we were number one? <laughs> Lack of discipline. Mm. Um, and the reason for getting involved People are getting involved for all the wrong reasons, not because they know how. And more people are getting in, in not through the audition uh, points, which is every actor's interview, yeah. but because they know a producer or an executive producer. Mm. Thank you. Um, the lack of training and the willingness to allow self to be trained is something that, you know, I can't stand. Well, thank you very much, Hilda Dokuba, for coming on the show this morning. Oh, it was fantastic to have you and Definitely. talk to you. <laughs> thank pleasure. you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of the show today. I'm Ade Sula, Omar One. I'm Rafael Yosini. And I'm Shayto Atigari. Thank you for watching. From my entire team here in Lagos, enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.